Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Blackstock, and I'm the Marketing Manager for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Easily Migrate Your IT Environment to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Using Rackware. Before we get started, I'd like to review a few housekeeping items. This webcast is designed to be interactive between you and the presenter. The webcast console you are looking at can be completely customized. You can resize or move any of the windows that you have open. At the bottom of the page, there are multiple widgets that are also available to you. Most importantly, the Q&A widget is there if you have any questions during today's presentation. A consolidated list of questions will be published and added to the console after today's presentation. A copy of today's slide deck and a link to an OCI free trial are available to you in the resource list, which you can locate at the bottom of your screen. Additionally, a recording for this presentation will be made available shortly after the live presentation concludes, and you can access this from the same registration link that you used to register for today's event. Also, feel free to share this registration link with your peers. If you experience audio or screen issues, please press F5 to refresh your screen. If your issue continues, please confirm that you have Adobe Flash installed and enabled. Please take a moment to review our safe harbor statement. Now I would like to introduce our speakers. We have Rajiv Gandhi, Director, Consulting Expert from CGI, Todd Matter, Chief Architect with Rackware, and Abdul Sait, the Senior Director of Product Management for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure here at Oracle. With that, I'll hand it over to you, Abdul. Thanks, Sora, and um, welcome, everyone. I'm really thrilled to tell you all about OCI. Um, I'll give you a quick introduction about OCI, um, the awesome Oracle Cloud infrastructure platform that we built for uh, enterprise workloads. And Rajiv um, from CGI will walk us through uh, their migration effort, how CGI migrated their workloads to OCI using Rackware, and then my friend uh, Todd Matters will take us uh, through how Rackware works and what it can do for uh, for you to migrate your workloads to OCI. Um, we'll wrap it up and uh, wait for your question Q and A. We we built OCI from the ground up as a cloud platform suited specifically for enterprise workloads or business workloads. Um, this was just natural for us to do because Oracle is an enterprise software company. We have been provided a software for enterprises for a long time um, with uh, Oracle database that everybody knows as well as eBusiness Suite, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, Hyperion, and a whole list of a lot of different applications and technologies. So when we embarked on building a cloud platform, it was just natural that we build it in a way that is best suited for running business applications. A lot of business customers or enterprise customers who have migrated to the cloud, um, to a great extent has migrated um, their tier four, tier five applications like websites and content management systems and such. Most customers have not migrated their crown jewels, the, the critical business applications to the cloud yet for various reasons. As a company that has dealt with enterprise customers for a very long time, we understand those needs that the enterprise customers have and what is required to be built into the platform to make it a viable place to run these highly critical applications. Now, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is a great place to run any kind of enterprise applications, whether it is Oracle applications or non-Oracle applications, Oracle databases or non-Oracle databases. But obviously, 
this is the absolute best place to run your Oracle applications and Oracle databases. Now, uh, on many other cloud platforms, the customers who have actually started uh, uh, building applications for the future um, find it difficult to bring their existing applications, the, the applications that are actually running their business today. Whereas on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, you can bring your existing application as it is today and use all the nice features and capabilities of Oracle Cloud to build the future applications that are cloud native, that are container based, elastic, and highly scalable. You can bring your, your existing applications today and then start building for the future. Now, one of the key enablers of building your, bringing your existing applications to the cloud is the ability to bring your own licenses. All the Oracle applications and databases that you have already licensed and the operating systems, including Linux and Windows, that you already own licenses for, you can bring the licenses to Oracle Cloud and start using your existing licenses instead of having to purchase new licenses. I'll give you a look at all the different services available in Oracle Cloud. We have a, a plethora of a complete set of services that's required to run any kind of applications on the cloud. This includes um, the compute service uh, of various shapes and sizes. We have uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure was the first cloud platform to make bare metal servers available just like you launch VMs. So we have bare metal servers available as well as VMs in various different shapes and sizes. We have different kinds of storage available uh, then, uh, as block storage, as file storage, and object storage. And the block storage that's available is very high performance NVMe block storage. And then we have database service available for Oracle databases in all kinds of flavors that you are used to running Oracle database, whether as singleton or in a rack configuration or as exadata. In addition to this, we have a, a super performant networking layer. We have containers available, Kubernetes as a service available, and a whole host of uh, uh, edge applications available for DNS management, VPN connectivity, and high bandwidth, low latency, fast connectivity between your data center and Oracle, as well as the, um, what we call cloud at customer, which is an entire Oracle cloud stack running in your data center, um, just in case you know you want to wait for a little bit to get onto Oracle Cloud Infrastructure or you want to keep some applications in your data center while migrating everything else over to the cloud. A core concept of um, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, like many other clouds that are available today, is regions. Um, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is available across multiple geographies in many different regions. We have laid it out this way so that you can respect uh, the data sovereignty required um, depending on the geography you are in, as well as to set up uh, production and DR architectures that you can uh, switch over between regions if something goes wrong in one region. We have a large number of regions available today uh, for um, OCI and many more coming. Um, we have uh, a Canadian region coming immediately to be followed by a Japanese region, a region in India and Singapore, and many more to follow. <coughs> With region, our, our uh, layout is divided into multiple availability zones. As I, as I mentioned, the region construct is basically to provide you uh, a DR architecture, so you can have production in one place and the disaster recovery environment the other, whereas multiple AD architecture gives you the capability to have high availability architectures that's distributed uh, where your, um, your servers, your VMs, your infrastructure is distributed across multiple availability domain. Each availability domain 
is connected to the other within the region with uh, with a very high speed connectivity of less than 500 microseconds latency between these ADs. And the uh, network constructs available within OCI like um, OVCN or virtual network on um, subnets within the VCN can traverse multiple ADs. So you can, you can have a single network extend across multiple availability domains. At the same time, uh, spread your infrastructure components between availability domains for high availability. So just in case, even if an entire availability domain goes down, nothing happens to your application. And each availability domain is made up of one or multiple data centers. Now, connecting all these regions and availability domains is our high-speed network backbone, which is uh, which is built with uh, with the enterprise requirements in mind, with uh, less than 100 microsecond latency between the infrastructure components within an AD. One of the key aspects of an enterprise connected application is being able to spread that application or the infrastructure across multiple data centers. And that, uh, to a great extent, in addition to the cloud data centers, also includes the customer's data centers. As an enterprise company, we clearly understand that Oracle customers most probably are not going to migrate all their workloads today to Oracle Cloud. Many enterprises want to continue running at least some of the workloads in their, their own data centers in a hybrid architecture, or want to adopt a multi-cloud architecture where they spread their um, workloads across different cloud providers. When you have these kind of uh, architectures where the workloads are spread across multiple data centers on, on different cloud providers or between customers' own data center and Oracle Cloud, a very key a component that becomes very important is the interconnectivity between these. Oracle provides what's called fast connect to, uh, so that you can have a, a low latency, high speed, high bandwidth connectivity between your data center and Oracle Cloud. Now, one difference, one major difference between Oracle Cloud and other cloud providers is how we charge you for that connectivity. We are almost 97% cheaper than uh, the, the other leading cloud providers in the field. Now, we understand this is critical for customers because most of the enterprise customers need to move a lot of data between Oracle Cloud and wherever else they are running the rest of the workloads. A dedicated virtual network with off-box virtualization is what allowed us to launch bare metal servers where the networking is actually kind of like a bump in the wire. It is not embedded into the server, so we don't have access to anything that is running on your server. Now, this also allows us to do things that is not possible on any other cloud. Today, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is the only cloud where we have shared block storage, as well as um, uh, uh, um, rack for or Oracle database. Now, having uh, real application clusters or rack for Oracle databases is a must-have for most enterprise customers who are running production workloads. So Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is the only place where you'll be f you find availability of um, rack and exadata on top of cloud platform. Now, I, I mentioned to you the shared uh, block storage that's available, and this is the sh same block storage that'll, that we make available to you uh, to attach to your virtual machines for any kind of workload that you are running. Now, these blo block storage devices are extremely high performance, and they are more high performance than any other cloud provider that you, that's available in the market. And the way we have priced it actually makes it almost again 90% cheaper than anybody else that's out there in the market. In addition to everything that I mentioned to you so far, um, uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure includes um, object, archive, file storage, 
with uh, um, block storage with millions of uh, um, read and write IOPS, extremely high performant um, object store and file storage, and then Kubernetes as a service and Docker and a lot of edge services that are available for DDoS protection and DNS management and anything else that you need to run a, a cutting edge enterprise application. Now, when, when, we, when we were designing and planning how we want to architect our cloud platform, one thing that we always kept in mind is a key requirement that enterprises have, which is governance. Enterprises usually want to um, fence different kind of environments or different work groups or different departments and make sure the entire environment is manageable and governable based on the processes and procedures set in the enterprise. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure provides you very clean ways of uh, implementing this uh, across multiple tenancies or within the same tenancy with the use of what we call compartments and tags and identity federation. A, a quick look at the, uh, the, the cost of Oracle Cloud versus the other cloud platforms available today. You can see Oracle Cloud in, in pretty much every category is about 50% or more cheaper than the nearest cloud competitor. Now, when when you're looking at a single VM or a little bit of storage, this might not make a huge difference, but most of the enterprise workloads now includes hundreds and hundreds of VMs, and the difference could run into millions of dollars or over a year in savings if you're running on Oracle Cloud. For the customers who are running um, the standard business applications in their data center today, there are a lot of advantages in moving these applications to the cloud. Uh, just think about a, an HR application that you're running where you're doing payroll uh, once in two weeks. Now, when the payroll runs, everything else has to pretty much stop because the payroll process takes up a lot of, um, a lo a lot of processing power of the servers where it is running. If you're on the cloud, you can actually scale up or scale out these applications. You don't have to run at the same capacity level at the same time. The, just the, the, the quick provisioning and the elasticity available in the cloud allows for architectures that were not possible before. And it brings a level of agility that is actually going to propel your business for, forward as well as cut down the cost tremendously compared to what you are spending on um, in your data centers today. Now, migrate these applications to OCI requires a, a good amount of planning because most of these applications are very critical applications for you. There are two ways of migrating these applications to OCI. For applications that are like very, very well known and very heavily used from Oracle uh, site like Oracle eBusiness Suite and PeopleSoft and JDE, there are some tools that are available from Oracle to, to lift and shift those applications to Oracle uh, Cloud Infrastructure. The same thing applies for Oracle Database as well. Now this works very well if you are migrating small environments with a few number of VMs or physical machines. But for most of our customers, when they do migration planning, uh, they end up planning for migrating either the entire data centers or hundreds and hundreds of VMs at a time for uh, integrated application environments. Now, in those kind of uh, situations, it's better to approach an application agnostic migration approach. In an application agnostic approach, you are not uh, moving one application at a time, but you are moving a bunch of VMs at a time, as long as those VMs that when they, when they land and, and, and spin up on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, as long as they keep the same um, host name and IP address, pretty much most of your applications are going to be just happy and work fine. Now, when it comes to application agnostic migration, uh, there, are, there are a few things that need to be done that needs to be very carefully calibrated, which is um, capturing the VM or exporting the VM into an image, converting that image to something that can be launched with an OCI, and you know this needs to be done at scale. To do these things at scale, 
um, it's it's better to use applications that are specialized for this kind of migration purpose. And one of the very popular applications of that nature available through our partner uh, on OCI is Rackware. So now let's uh, let's uh, hear from Rajiv on how CGI migrated their applications to OCI using Rackware. Take it away, Rajiv. Thanks, Abdul. Now, let me tell you something about CGI. CGI has been with Oracle for the last three, three and a half years, and we have been uh, using the cloud infrastructure of Oracle, you know, for three, three and a half years. So CGI is a company that was founded in 1976, and it's been in business for 40 years. It's uh, the fifth largest independent IT consulting company in the world. We basically um, have a track record of delivering 95% of projects on time under budget. We have our delivery centers in North America, Europe, India, Philippines. 82% of our members, which are employees, Hold shares, and so they make make them more accountable to the client. During uh, 2015, we conducted uh, 5,974 in-person client satisfaction assessments and received a 9 by 10 average. We have a presence in 40 countries, and we have 400 offices worldwide have more than 5,000 end-to-end service clients, have 74,000 employees, and have a Canadian, um, have a revenue of Canadian $10.8 billion. We have 150 IP solutions, and X2R was one of the solutions which was migrated by Rackware, and who helped us to migrate this uh, solution for us. So let me tell you something about uh, the solution that was migrated by Rackware. It is called X2R, which is nothing but a business suite uh, for upstream back office. It consists of a couple of modules. One is the LAN module which basically uh, reports of land in U.S. and Canada and gives comprehensive uh, reports, details about well, minerals, leases, records for both oil and gas as well as trust client. It also has a GIS uh, info package that allows you to see maps for land, leases, and wells. The next one is a mobile data capture. This enables us to capture volumetric and uh, operational data from the field. The third one is the hydrocarbon accounting, which is called X2R HCA. Gives operators a visibility they need for profitability, forecasting, simulation, and production optimization. This also uses the GIS uh, info, so you can basically you know, track on a map where a particular well is, where a particular mineral is, and so on. And the last package uh, that parts that Rackware helped us to migrate was the X2R FAS, which is nothing but a uh, accounting module which allows uh, accountants to administer and finance uh, administer financial and operational data for oil and gas as well as uh, trust organization. This is the same thing what I told you all about. It's basically what it does, what each of the modules do, and um, for X2R. Now, this is the X2R architecture that we have. It's basically this was uh, in the OCI environment. 
it basically consists it 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 was um, in one availability domain it had two vcn basically a production vcn a dev vcn and it had um, a nat gateway an internet gateway a local peering gateway and multiple subnets so rackware basically did was take a servers and place them in different environments in the production vcn or the test vcn and in different subnets so they helped us in placing all these uh, servers where they were required so why did we migrate to oci so there were some you know pre migration challenges basically one was the most important thing is that we move, needed to move to you know to a more reliable and high performance environment the second was we had a very sh short timeline to migrate uh, to from our data centers to the oci environment benefits of oci we were on a old first generation environment and we wanted to move to a second generation faster better environment oci provides better cpus better memory and um, the networking capabilities are very good why rackware you know why did we use rackware one was basically the timeline you know rackware had something right out of the box and it could do what it wanted the second thing was we did not want anything to be installed in a production environment so rackware had those uh, features that they put the server in the oci environment and it would pull the data and put it on uh, install the box and they did an awesome job i'm very happy with them it's a proven technology so let me pass now to todd matters from rackway thanks for jay so now we'll spend just a little bit of time talking about uh, the rackway solution so <clears throat> so just a little bit about rackway uh, we were founded in 2009 we have four locations Company headquarters is in Fremont, California. That's actually part of Silicon Valley. We have offices in Salt Lake City, Philadelphia, and Pune, India. Uh, so we're uh, just over 100 employees now. We're growing ra uh, very rapidly. Uh, we currently have well over 400 uh, production customers. So Rackware at the high level has a software management suite for cloud. Uh, we are very enterprise focused. Uh, we certainly have SMB customers, but uh, we kind of pride ourselves on doing large complex workloads, tiered applications, things like that. Uh, the software supports multiple use cases, uh, migration, uh, disaster recovery. There's a whole hybrid cloud management uh, package as well. Uh, today, I'll just be talking mostly about migration, although I'll touch base on the disaster recovery uh, solution as that's a nice follow-up after uh, migration. Uh, this just lists some of the joint customers. All these customers uh, uh, in some capacity have been migrated or configured for DR in the Oracle Cloud uh, with the Rackware software. There's uh, multiple different categories. There's direct end users, there's MSPs, there's other uh, integrators as well. Okay, so the underpinning technology for all those uh, use cases is a true any-to-any -any replication and sync technology. What that means is virtually any workload, regardless of where it sits, can be replicated into the Oracle Cloud. So first, let's look at the lower right-hand corner uh, of this slide. Um, for on-prem servers, uh, whether they're physical or virtual, they can be migrated into the Oracle Cloud. So, yes, there's support for physical servers. In fact, uh, the Oracle Cloud supports physical servers, and the software can replicate and sync from physical 
in your data center to a physical server in the uh, Oracle Cloud, or it could go physical uh, to virtual. Now, part of the confluences that the software supports is cross-hypervisor. So that means that if you have workloads running on, let's say, VMware or Hyper-V or really any kind of hypervisor, they can be replicated and synced into uh, the Oracle Cloud very uh, successfully. Um, <clears throat> as far as workloads on other clouds, it pretty much doesn't matter. Uh, what cloud they're in, the software can replicate and sync from any of those clouds, such as Amazon or Azure, into the Oracle cloud uh, as well. So should you be looking to migrate uh, any of your workloads that are already in the cloud, it doesn't matter, um, they can be uh, seamlessly replicated and migrated into uh, Oracle cloud as well. Okay, so what does this look like at the high level? Let's say we have a set of workloads and we want to migrate them into the Oracle Cloud. So first, in the Oracle Cloud, you would spin up a very small virtual machine. Uh, the software installs uh, on top of Oracle Linux uh, or Red Hat or CentOS. It takes about 20 minutes. Now that RMM box, that stands for Rackware Management Module. So if you hear me refer to RMM, uh, that's, uh, that, that's what we call our software. Now, importantly, uh, you don't need to install anything on your origin environment. You don't need uh, to uh, configure access to hypervisors or storage arrays. There's no databases or proxy servers that need to be deployed. Uh, at the RMM, there's a, a whole console. It supports multiple users, role-based access. You know, different users can be doing different things. Um, you would enter in the list of workloads that you want to migrate, IP addresses or DNS host names, and the software connects in over the network at the operating system level. <clears throat> First, the software does a discover operation, so it understands enough about both the hardware as well as the software to be able to replicate that server into the Oracle Cloud. So first, the RMM will interface to the uh, Oracle Cloud APIs, and it will provision a server, uh, by the way, virtual or physical, of the appropriate size and capability of the origin. So remember, the software did a discover of the underlying hardware, so it knows the size and type of server to provision uh, in the Oracle Cloud. Next, the software will apply the image of the origin to that target server. <clears throat> this is a non-disruptive process, so you're still up and running and generating production transactions uh, in your uh, origin environment. And upon a reboot of the servers in the target environment, you have an exact replica of the origin workload running in the target except for device drivers. So the hardware will likely be different, so the device drivers will be different. I don't say hardware, it could be virtual or physical. Uh, and then optionally networking uh, uh, may be different. Now, the software can keep IPs. Uh, Oracle Cloud does a great job of uh, bring your own IP type of a thing, so you can bring your own IPs. Or if you decide to change the IPs, the RMM will automatically uh, re-IP the images. Now, again, I'm, I mentioned this is non-disruptive, so at this point your application owners can come in. Uh, perform any validation testing that uh, needs to be done. Now, remember, you're still generating transactions in the origin environment. So another important capability is a delta sync. This is a highly efficient delta sync. The software is smart enough to transfer over only the changed bytes from origin to target. You can do as <coughs> many delta syncs as you would like. Um, the... Uh, you know, it's often a good idea just to keep the target, uh, you know, at least close to the origin. And then when you go to do your final cutover, there will be a minimum of data to transfer. Uh, once you do your cutover sync, you do a final verification, and you're up and running production in the target environment. So at the high level, this is essentially what we did uh, with CGI. And then after some period of time, you could repurpose or decommission your origin hardware. So at the high level, uh, there's a number of steps. Uh, the first step is what we call 
assessment of the origin. <clears throat> now, there's a number of optional steps here, so this can be quite extensive. It's a very, if it's a very large environment, if it's a small environment, you can skip some of these steps. But essentially, the assessment is about understanding the environment and the infrastructure and putting together a plan for how that needs to be replicated into the target environment. This would include the overall topology, uh, very, uh, very important. The RMM can actually be deployed at this step. Um, it will do a discover of your origin servers as well as the environment, and that information can be very useful in defining your application affinities, your wave plans, and how things should end up being set up on the uh, target environment. Next is the preparation of the target environment. Here's where the, the, you know, the real work starts, uh, starts to happen. Accounts are created, the networks are deployed. Uh, if necessary, additional RMMs uh, are deployed to handle the load. Um, we may do a test replication or a pilot here uh, and then fold lessons learned into uh, the process. Uh, importantly here, we're testing out the network, making sure that it's stable, and we understand the throughput uh, capabilities so we can come up with very accurate estimates about the time frame that the servers would end up being replicated as well as synced. Here's where we would end up creating uh, the project plan, uh, perhaps uh, a run book, uh, and you know, some other collateral around you know, topology and things like that. In a lot of ways, <laughs> the actual replication piece ends up being the easiest step. Uh, it may be the most time consuming just in terms of transferring the data. Uh, the prerequisites are going through. Uh, they're deployed. Uh, the replication process uh, includes auto-provisioning uh, of the uh, target servers. Um, if there's multiple ways, we do this in a pipeline fashion where we, we overlap the, the, the waves while we're finishing the first wave, we're starting the second wave. So, you know, things are kind of uh, done in process. And, uh, you know, d depending on the needs, uh, you know, we can migrate a very large number of servers, you know, per week once we kind of get into uh, that groove. So then the next step is verification. You know, this would be done basically per wave on the target servers. Again, the app owners come in. Maybe they need to make some tweaks if the IP addresses change and the apps are sensitive to IPs. You know, all that would uh, you know, be documented uh, for the final cutover. We would uh, come up with very accurate estimates of the sync times so we know what that final uh, you know, process looks like. And then the cutover happening uh, very smooth. We would schedule this with the uh, application owners, usually done during uh, off-peak hours. Uh, you know, the way we do these syncs, again, you can do as many syncs as you like. We would do uh, what I call final minus one. Um, that would transfer over all the change data from the previous uh, since the previous sync. Only then would we quiesce the application, then we do the final sync. Now that final sync will happen very quickly because we're doing this during off-peak and the final minus one sync uh, did transfer all the data. So your downtime is an absolute minimum. You can do a quick verification test. Again, that's already been done previously as part of the initial replication process. So that happens very quickly as well. And then for you know, this application or set of apps, uh, you go live in the uh, target production environment. So let me let me touch base just a little bit on you know some of the other use cases in particular just uh, uh, disaster recovery. It's actually very common to do a migration for a set of servers and then very shortly thereafter or or, or quickly uh, do a, a, a disaster recovery uh, setup. Now the setup for disaster recovery would be very similar to the workflow. It's actually the same for a migration, except now you would create a very sophisticated DR or sync policy. This then runs in an automated uh, fashion. Now there are options here. Uh, the software can replicate and sync to just a storage location. We call this dynamic provisioning. For those servers that we're doing dynamic provisioning on, during steady state there's no compute resources being used. Um, then only if we do a DR drill or a failover would any servers be uh, provisioned. For pre-provisioning of servers, we would do that for more aggressive RTOs, recovery time objectives, 
Um, and the whole point here is uh, in the event of an extended outage on the origin, we would perform that failover operation and you're up and running in production. I should note that the fallback is just as seamless and integrated as the failover. Uh, so, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about doing a complete re-replication from target back into the uh, origin environment. So the whole point here is you have different priorities of servers and you can apply different types of policies for those servers. For your lower priority servers, with a less aggressive RTO, you can do dynamic provisioning. That's your lowest cost option. At the opposite end of the spectrum, you would pre-provision for your infrastructure servers, mission critical apps, maybe you know, some of your uh, larger databases. So just to kind of summarize, what are some of the differentiators here? This is a true any-to-any -any replication in sync. Again, we do have some special features to the Oracle Cloud. We found the Oracle Cloud is very powerful. Uh, it probably has the best both networking as well as storage infrastructure uh, that we've worked with. The performance characteristics remain the same regardless of load. So you can uh, you know, generate quite a bit of load. Your performance is going to remain excellent uh, in the Oracle Cloud, and we work very nicely with it. With the Rackware process, you get transaction consistency uh, across your servers. When you migrate those servers into the Oracle Cloud and they boot, they're transaction uh, consistent. Uh, you have different options. Uh, you can tune and tweak uh, your RPO, RTO, and cost objectives. This is a file or file system-based mechanism. It's not storage. It's not just blindly copying sectors. It's much more intelligent than that. And you have the same workflows uh, across uh, multiple different use cases. So at this point, I'm going to pass it back to Abdul. Thank you, Todd and uh, uh, Rajiv. Um, it's been a wonderful presentation. Um, just, just recapping everything that we have discussed so far, um, we, we talked about um, OCI kind of like in a snapshot, a little bit of details on you know what's available on OCI and how it's uh, uh, the best platform to run your enterprise application workloads, and um, how Rackware can be used for migrating or simplifying the migration of enterprise workloads to OCI. And you have uh, uh, Rajiv talked about how CGI made use of Rackware to actually um, fast track and simplify their migration to Oracle Cloud and how beautifully it worked out. I would like to actually invite you to come try out um, Oracle Cloud and what it has to offer uh, hands-on by going to cloud.oracle.com slash jumpstart. Jumpstart uh, is kind of like a hands-on lab that we have set up for you to try out Oracle Cloud. You wouldn't have to create an account, create a OCI account. You don't have to put your credit card or anything. Just go in there um, and uh, set up an account and and start trying it out. You could also uh, try out OCI today for free. You can get up to $300 credits to take it as long as it allows you to go by just going to cloud.oracle.com slash try it. So the, everything that we talked about here on you know what um, Oracle Cloud offers to you, you'll be able to try it out firsthand and experience uh, the performance and the capabilities of the cloud. Thank you very much. Thank you all for attending today's webinar. We've reached the end of this presentation. We hope you enjoyed it and that you will join us again in the future for our digital events.